Hi everyone, and welcome to week 25. This week, I'm gonna show you how to use Reason and Record to replace a traditional hardware setup that a keyboard player in a band might use. Now, there's actually a, quite a few keyboard players from some very well-known artists out there that are using Reason as their main rig on tour all around the world every night. And the tips that I'm gonna give you this week are gonna show you a little bit of the options and how you might set that up. So let's get right into it. First things first, in order to properly replace a traditional hardware setup, you will need a few things in your arsenal. A well-built USB controller keyboard with as many keys as you may need is a must. Now some players prefer a full 88 note weighted action keyboard, while others may get along fine with just 49 or even 25 keys. I suggest you use a controller that supports our remote protocol so setup is fast and easy. If you're not sure which controllers are supported, you can see a full updated list at this link here. Next thing to do is make sure you're using an audio interface with good low latency drivers. If you're using a Mac setup, most audio interfaces out there use Core Audio, which offers low latency drivers, except for one very popular brand, which they require you to use in order to use their software, and it is not a good option for a live setup. If you're on a tight budget, you can even get away with just using the mini 1 8 inch stereo out jack on the computer and the standard core audio drivers on a laptop. If you're using a PC setup, make sure that the audio interface you are using has ASIO drivers, and most these days do. Do not, and I repeat, do not use WDM or DirectX drivers as they do not give you very low latency. And I do not suggest using just the internal sound card. It's just not high quality enough, and the latency on the drivers is terrible. Next is the setup. Now there are two methods of using Reason or Record that I've seen people use, and the choice of which one you use is really dictated by what you need. If you need to have the ability to switch quickly from one sound to the next without any pause or break in sound, then the first setup I will cover is your best option. If you have time to spare between sounds and are very organized, then option number two may be for you. Okay, let's start with option number one, which I will call Master Song Set List Setup. The idea here is that you load each sound that you will need to play as a separate track in the sequencer, using the Create Instrument selection in the menu. Since each sound is loaded and ready to play, you have the ability to quickly jump from sound to sound by just selecting which track the controller keyboard is active on. If you're using a keyboard that is supported by our remote codec, you may already have some of the buttons that are assigned to target next track and target previous track. But if you don't, then you can assign those functions to any buttons or keys on your controller by using the additional remote override selection in the options menu. Note that if you are playing a sound and you hold a chord and then target the next track, the notes of that sound are sustained until you lift your hands from the keys. Since you can have an unlimited amount of tracks in a song, you could have all the sounds you need in a song laid out in the order you play them and just open the song for that set. If you will be playing multiple sets with lots of sounds, just create another song for each set. If you need to set up splits for things like sample triggering on lower keys while you play the lead or melody part on the upper range, you have a couple of options. If the sound that you play the melody with is a single device, like a Thor, a Subtractor, or NNXT, or similar, you could create a combinator 
and pack an NNXT with your samples loaded and your other device into it and set the key range so that they do not overlap. If you are constantly needing to switch the sound for the right hand side and always need to keep the samples for triggering on the left, then you need a controller keyboard that has the ability to set certain keyboard ranges to zones on their own separate MIDI channels, like my M-Audio Axiom Pro here. Then what you do is work with the Advanced MIDI Preferences page and the Advanced MIDI device at the top of the rack to select the device which is triggering the samples on the channel assigned to the lower register here. If I were doing this, I would make sure that the device playing back the samples is all the way down at the bottom of the sequencer track list, so I do not select it by accident. Or better yet, just remove its sequencer track completely. Our second option is what I would call a patch favorites list setup. This option really would only be used in a situation where you may not be switching sounds a lot during a song, or if you do need to switch sounds, you have a little time between the parts that you play, so you can wait for the sounds to load in. This method would require you to do a bit of work. You would have to organize all the sounds you will be using in the order that you will be playing them for the set in a favorites list using the patch browser. To do this, select the first sound that you need, then open the browser, and click on the Create New Favorites List icon. Now you can take that sound which is selected and drag it into the list and repeat the process for each sound that you need. Note that these sounds can come from any device. You can also rearrange the order of the sounds by just clicking and dragging them to where you need in the list. If you're using a controller keyboard that is supported by remote, then you may already have the Select Next Patch or Previous Patch for Target Device assigned to buttons on your controller. But again, if you do not, you can also assign them to buttons or keys using the additional remote overrides function in the option menu. The last thing to do now is name this favorites list so you know what it contains. You can add both patches for devices and also songs to a favorites list. So it could be used for the master song set list option as well if you have multiple song files for different sets. Using these tips, you should be well on your way to replacing a traditional hardware setup with nothing more than maybe just a laptop, a good quality audio interface, and a good controller keyboard. And as I said last week, since our software is rock solid, you can rely on it working flawlessly for you, gig after gig, night after night. Well, that's it for this week. I'm James Bernard for Propellerhead Software, and I will see you all in a week. Bye.